What's up, man? You're in Nova Scotia? I'm actually in Alberta. Oh, okay. Your thing said Nova Scotia. Are you from the East Coast? I actually, I lived there for five years and I, I did a lot of podcasting work out there. Dude, I, I uh, <clears throat> it's a spot that not a lot of people know how rad it is, but man. Oh, yeah. I just love that area of Canada. You spent some time out there? Well, we played a couple shows out there and I got a ton of friends out there that always were like, man, you got to go, you got to go. And we have a lot of fans who are always telling us, you got to go to the East Coast, got to come to the East Coast, you have fans here. And um, we went for our first time. There was an 800 cap venue, and, and I was like, "Yeah, that's pretty." You know, this was going back a few years, so it was like I thought at the time I was like, "That's a lot of people, man. Like that's a, that's a big bite for us right now." And you know, wasn't really sure how that was going to play out, but it turned out that it was like sold out. There was people waiting to get in and couldn't get in, and wow. uh, the hospitality. Like not only that, it's the the people. The hospitality of a place like that is just second to none, man. It's like sort of like the same way it is in the South in America. Like people will just take you in and feed you and get you drunk. And it's just, I don't know, the vibe, I, I, something about that place, I've just always been like, that's my spot. No, that's a good comparison. It's true. They'll bring you in. They'll they'll show you the traditional food from the area. They'll bring you the drinks. Uh, yeah, it is very, very welcoming. Real quick, what's the space that we see you in now? Is this a rehearsal space or is that a recording space? Yeah, this is our rehearsal space uh, here at home. I, I am home at the moment. Um, and yeah, this is where we we rehearse the, the shit out of the tour, you know, the show and get, get everything right that we, we like to do. And um do pre-production here for the records as well um so we'll just bring in a small rig um you know and uh run run through countless ideas and different different ideas of um different structures of songs and different possibilities and different things we can try and this is you know this is the spot this is like um you know how people say uh you know, you're in the garage and you're getting it all together. Well, this is just sort of, this is just a nicer version of that. <laughs> right. This is uh, when you've leveled up, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody's got some space they do it in, right? So um, this is ours and um, we love it here. We spent, we spent a lot, a lot of time here. Um, it's kind of like, you know, a lot of people have hobbies in life and, you know, we're, we're just those kind of guys that, we're all in on this, you know, it's all, we've always been that way. Yeah. So this is not only our career, but it's also like what we, what we enjoy to do. So we, you know, we just come here and, you know, work, work on gear. Sometimes we just want to come, sometimes you just want to come here and work on your guitar or your amp or, or whatever you're doing or try it, mess around with a different tone or sound and try this amp and this guitar and get things sorted for, you know, going on tour and, and you go over songs or whatever. So yeah, like we're here or, we're here a lot, man. We spend a lot of time in this room. You guys are coming from uh, BC. I'm sort of just curious to talk to you about that. Um, what was it like for you guys sort of getting started out in that region in terms of being a rock group? Yeah, I don't know, man. It was, um, I'll tell you like this, like there's always some, <clears throat> there's always someone who's, who's surprised that we're from Kelowna, British Columbia. And I get it because, uh, you know, it's when you think of Colonia, you don't really think of rock bands or or, or people that look like us, for that matter. Um, but it's uh, it's like this, man. This is a really cool spot to uh, come home to come home to after a tour. Um, and it just sort of started like I came here from Ontario. I'm from Ontario originally. I grew up there. Um, I moved from a very very small town in northwestern Ontario. That's actually sort of by um, Winnipeg okay, and, and Thunder Bay. It's uh, called Dryden. It's really small. And, uh, that, you know, was the place that where I earned my stripes, so to speak. And it made me who I am. And, and then I moved to London and then I moved to, I lived in Montreal and then I lived in Toronto. And, um, that was me just bouncing around trying to get, you know, all the, all the, um, all the uh, kinks ironed out in being a musician, a young musician. And uh, then I came to Kelowna and I was only coming here for like, I, I planned to just visit, put it that way, you mm -hmm. know, and I, because I was going to Vancouver and I got here um, 
and I uh, I met the guys in the band, and um, it was it was unlikely, an unlikely chance sort of a series of events that brought us together, um, and it was weird because I just never left. I also got here, and when I got here, I was really into it. I was just really into how it felt vibe how it looked because if anyone you know if you've ever been to Cologne it's a lot like California Mm -hmm. um doesn't really get very cold here in the winter you know there's a there's a big desert landscape in and around the area yeah um it's it's super nice and um and and then yeah I met a bunch of dudes who were into like you know rock and punk and metal and um which was again like really unlikely for the type of people that are here and uh, we started a band and it, it ended up working out for us but it's it's you know it's one of those places that it is the vibe of the city is different than the vibe of the guys that we are but you know there are still a lot of people here that are are like you know that are similar to us and we just you know crew up with all those people and we, you know, we do our own thing and everybody else does their, their thing. And it's kind of, it's kind of cool in the sense that we are like, you know, everybody that's sort of like us here all bands together. And I, I kind of like that because then, you know, sometimes in bigger cities and areas you get sort of lo- like as, if you're a band anyway, you get lumped into everybody sounds and looks and acts a certain way or, you know, they're just sort of like carbon copies of each other where, we're here. We're put it this way. We're sticking out. You know, we're 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 very much our own people, and we're all right with that. Yeah. No, I can totally see that. It seems like Cologne is sort of the type of area where you can go into a scene and you can do your own thing, um, but at the same time, everybody sort of keeps their own individuality, and it's there. There are pockets of of certain things that people are interested in. So, uh, you mentioned you lived in a lot of different places in Canada. Um, not only that, you guys have traveled to quite a bunch of locations, uh, with the group on the road and you guys have Hungary coming up, Poland, Germany, um, looking at all this travel, do you have any standout moments or any moments that really made an impact on you in terms of traveling with the wild? Yeah. I mean, yeah, like each tour is, it's sort of, um, if you're looking at a tour, it's like, you got to look at it like it's your own, it's own, um, its own uh, experience, I guess, you know, like every place that you can go, um, and play rock music or in 2020, it is like, um, that in itself is somewhat of an accomplishment, you know, on some level, because we're just, we're up against it these days, you know, rock bands, Mm -hmm. punk metal bands, hardcore bands, all of that. Um, and, um, so, I think, you know, first and foremost, I like to look at all of that as like, no matter if it, we're going to Calgary or, you know, uh, Vancouver or Saskatchewan, or we're going to Germany or, you know, the UK or France or, or any of that. Um, it's all kind of, I, I kind of all, I, I try to take the same sort of approach to it all. Like, you know, being thankful that you have people anywhere that give a shit about you enough that you are able to book a show and your band comes and then watch you. So, you know, I think, I just think it, that's, you know, that might sound like a, a bit of a canned answer or a stock answer, but it's, it's really true because, you know, um, it's all about playing live now, no matter what genre you're in, I guess like, you know, certain hip hop guys wouldn't say that because there are a lot of their, a lot of those, cats make a shitload of money just sitting at home and recording in their their room and hey man that's all good i'm not i'm not hating on it but it's just especially you know if you're playing if you're playing music like playing it in a band or um you know in a setting with instruments and shit like that it's really dependent seems to be really dependent on uh, playing live that's where you're making your money that's where you're finding new fans and, and all of that sort of stuff so um you know, if you're able to do that in any facet, whether again, whether it's in your country or in or other countries, it's just important to be thankful of that. So, um, you know, I, again, uh, that's my that's the mentality I take when we go out on the road, no matter where it is, and try to give the best show that we can to everybody. But uh, I will say though, if I, if you know, if you want to get specific about that, Europe has been really, really good to my band, and in the last you know few years, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that Europe has. Uh, 
Europe has a rock scene that like rock music is still a thing there, you know, mm -hmm. in America, obviously we, we still have rock shows and rock fans and rock bands and, and punk bands and punk and et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's, you know, totally cool. And, and especially I'll say like, we wouldn't be even able to go to half of these places in our band if it weren't for our fans in, in our home country. Yeah. Um, that, but that being said, it's like you, you go to Europe and it's, you know, like we're, you know, Vok and we played last year, there's 80,000 people there, mm -hmm. you know, it's crazy. Don't show me a, a festival in Canada that has 80,000 people going to see rock and metal and punk bands. It doesn't no. happen. So it just, no. that, that in itself is like, you know, that's proof that it's just a different thing there. It's still very much pop. He's very popular there. So going there was an, it, when we started to go there to where we were at now over there, it's like, you know, to see the growth and to see, you know, the fan base increase and, and just like people having a good time over there and, and just the vibe of what rock shows are like over there. It's, uh, that's been, that's been standout. I could say, I could say that. Yeah. That's incredible. That's definitely something I'd like to experience. Um, everybody I've interviewed, they say that when you get out to those regions, just the passion that they have for the music uh, is second to none. So it's, that's definitely going to be exciting for you guys. And you guys are going to be hitting the road with some brand new music. You got the album still believe in rock and roll coming out on E1 March 20th, 2020. Um, and you guys worked with producer Mike Fraser on this record, who's teamed up with Van Halen, Aerosmith, ACDC, um, talk to me about that collaboration with Mike and what it was like uh, having him in on the music. Yeah, it's been, you know, Mike and I have uh, we've been working together since 2015. Mm -hmm. So we did the two records together um, as well. Um, and Mike's, and, and I think, you know, that it's not as if we um, sprung for like the hot name producer or anything like that. There, there's a relationship, there's a real relationship there, Bill, that's been, you know, happening over time. Sure. Um, being that it's, you know, our third record together. Um, and, uh, and yeah, like that, that, that whole thing, the fact that, you know, you, you start making a record together, you finish a process, you stay in contact, you make another record together, you stay in contact, you make a third record together that whole like uh, um aspect of the relationship is like a huge part of you know in making records together when when you make a record together because you have a relationship outside of just work right so right. with with that comes the ability to communicate really well and then, and when you're in a studio setting that is like a very a very crucial thing to have especially in music like, like really, really in music is, I think I guess specifically is what I'm talking about because when you're, um, when you're trying to communicate with somebody, uh, in terms of how you want something to sound or how you want it to feel, there are things that you have to learn how each other respond to, you know, like uh, this should sound more glassy. This should sound more uh, more warm. This should, you know, this should sound more punchy or bitey. This, okay, this part we've got to lay back on it. It's got to be, you know, these are, these are things that, um, a lot of people maybe, you know, uh, if they were green in a scenario or not even if they were green, if they just didn't really know, or they were comfortable, you know, with, with the yeah. person they're working with, that could be, uh, that could be challenging. But, Mike, again, Mike, there's been such a relationship outside of work. He's one of my best friends. Um, and, you know, we, ha we hang out, we talk a lot, we do shit, you know, we go places and, um, that, that whole, just that whole, having that whole comfort there in the studio just makes for such a, such a smoother process when making a record. Um, and Mike's really been great over the years at, while we've developed our sound to where it is on this record, he's been developing the sound along the way. The first two records, I mean, they sound, they sound killer. Mike did an amazing job, but this third one, uh, it's like the band in my, in, you know, in myself, we found, I feel like we found Elaine with the right set of songs that we wanted to do and the right, you know, approach to those songs in the, from the songwriting perspective. And we just, fully committed to it and ran it in that whole that whole lane and that vibe for this record specifically and and at the same time 
Mike reacted to that being, you know, it's the third record that we've done together. Mm-hmm. And there's something about that the sounds that he got and the uh, performances that we were able to pull out um, of each other on this record that is, is to me anyway, it's, it stands up. Uh, it sounds, it's my favorite of the three. Like it's, and I, and that's easy to say cause it's new, but it's really, there's something really special about it to my ear and, uh, I'm quite proud of it. We're all quite proud of it. And everybody's like really, um, excited about this record and getting it out. I love that. And I've been personally listening to it and I think it's, it's really awesome. Uh, it's, it's really packed with a lot of different influences. Um, and my favorite thing that a band can do is have influences in their music, but also deliver it in their own way and have that originality. Uh, so I think it's awesome what you guys are doing. Uh, the tour is definitely going to be great. The record is still believe in rock and roll. It's dropping on March 20th on E1 records by the wild Dylan. Thank you so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me today and um, enjoy your time out in Calgary, man.